I knew that man, comrade. A fine blacksmith, Bjorn. It gladdens me more than you can imagine to see he and Mara escaped Hunter's Edge. But it's no wonder he blames me for what happened there. Well, it started like any other day, comrade. I told you before, and this much was true. Hunter's Edge was a quiet place. There hadn't been a peep from the Phantom Forest in nearly a century. And save the occasional drunken orc wandering in from the west, there was nothing for any of the townsfolk to fear. I was on patrol one sunny afternoon when I stumbled upon a pair of scrawny orcs building a fire. Bellowed at them to get, but they went for their swords instead. Well, I made short work of them, but I couldn't find their tribe insignia anywhere. What I did find was a deep red apple-sized gemstone in one of their pockets. It was warm in my hand and seemed far too fine a treasure to belong to an orc. You and I both know that now, but then my senses were dulled by years of peace. I'd grown soft. I was foolish. I figured it to be an oversized ruby, and it was the worst misjudgment of my life, comrade. Their kind never did take a shine into such finery, so I assumed it had been stolen for its trading value. I pocketed the gem and planned on sending it up to Academy North for the order to deal with. All was peaceful back at the village. All was quiet. If only I'd known then. If only I had paid attention, had seen the signs. Night had only just begun to fall when they surrounded us. It could only have been a few dozen, but they swarmed like hundreds. Those of us who resisted were immediately cut down. I watched the blood of innocent villagers spill into the streets. I saw their bodies hit the ground. People, it was my job to protect, comrade. I made myself promise that night, comrade. Never again would I let another sign of source pass me by unnoticed. Never again would I fail in my sworn duty. It's a promise I intend to keep. Let's... Let's discuss it another time, comrade. It ain't easy for an old bear like me to greet these ghosts. For now, maybe we ought to soldier forward. Plenty to be done around these parts, eh? Ready to advance? Ready to defend? Ooh, what a pain! Demons take all bandits. I bit one of the buggers in two, and still he stabbed and stabbed before he finally croaked. I have no idea what I am really, but only that I was caught in a snare when I was very little. Luckily, the hunter thought I didn't look quite appetising enough to be eaten, and so he sold me to Mara. Bjorn didn't like the look of me at first, but when I grew strong, stronger than five stallions combined, I was suddenly promoted to carrier beast. Were that I was weak. For I love carrying things. For our rescue. Ooh, what a pipe. This forest may have a pleasant air about it, your knightship. Be not mistaken, foes lurk behind it. We're refugees, my liege. Two of the far too few souls that managed to escape Hunter's Edge when the orcs invaded. We were hoping to reach Silverglen, but we were attacked by highwaymen. Those devils would have scalped and skewered us if it hadn't been for Alfie. Well, the brave creature bit one of them in half, though not before being frightfully wounded himself. Bravest beast of burden in the borough is Alfie, but the poor blighter's bleeding like a stuck pig and can't move no more, which means we can't move no more either. Why, it would be folly to abandon a bandit killer in a wood full of bandits now, wouldn't it, your knightship? And yet... We can hardly stay here forever. Silverglen is close enough to see the chimney fumes from here. Mara absolutely refuses to leave Alfie's side and, like I said, I'm inclined to agree with her. If only... <clears throat> if so. Oh, we'd be mighty grateful if you would escort us to Silverglen, your knightship. But for it is our aim to set up shop there. A new smithy in a new town. Without Alfie, though, without the tools he carries, I'd be like a fisherman without his rod, grasping for salmon with his bare hands. Never could I produce the quality of work for which I'm renowned. Our predicament is clear. 
And the biggest problem is that Alfie's wounds are so dire, no ordinary healing potion will work. He needs... Well, I don't know what he needs. Ooh, the pipe. Bless your heart merely to suggest it, my friend. But you'll need powerful magic indeed to cure this devilish gas. I've heard they dabble in healing rituals in Silver Glen, which is, ironically, the very place we're unable to reach, us three. A bloodstone? Then it is in your power to heal me, will you? That would be the kind thing to do, yes. My word! Well, this is marvellous! Nay, miraculous! Outlaws be damned! I am healed! As powerful as it is, Sinister. I need a moment to reflect. No one's coming from the direction of Sysiel, of course. Well, except maybe one of those roaming skeletons. Pairs. Those as giving as you are rare and exquisite as rubies. What a pleasure to behold you. We ever reached Silver Glen? What do you say, your knightship? Will you escort us to Silver Glen? He's right as rain again as Alfie, and he has you to thank for it, my liege. A miracle worker is what you are. We are your knightship. With Alfie healed, we're raring to go. Right you are, Sir Knight. This is it, Mara. You and Alfie stick close together now. Onward, to Silver Glen. Went to his dinner once and he saw blue goblins for a fortnight. Feeling hot under the collar. Do you think we'll make it? You do, don't you? Oh, Lords above, am I jumpy? Silvergun can't be far off, quickly now! Silvergun can't be far off, quickly now! Silverglen! I can see the watchtowers! We're almost there! Away from me, fiend! Away! Ah! Someone help me! Please!
unending darkness. The world is not immaculate as yet, friend. Be wary, be vigilant. Silver Glen! We did it! Oh, you did it! Oh, Mara, my love! Truly have we been delivered. What is to become of us here, I wonder? Oh, but I know, don't I? A blacksmith I was in Hunter's Edge, and a blacksmith I'll remain, for such is my one purpose in life. Aye, come what may, your knightship, I thank you for standing by me, by us, during our hour of need.
that, it's time to go spelunking for Tenebrium. Assuming this Maradino actually knew... <laughs> well, I'll be a son of a troll. It's one of those big fairies for that things. What are they called again? A human! That means you must be looking for Maradino. No other of you fairies has been here since he... Go ahead, go ahead, <laughs> go right along. I'm certain you'll be treated just like he was. <laughs> nothing, nothing. We didn't want to spoil the surprise. <laughs> That's a good point you make there. Oh, why not? I'll tell you. It's our king, you see. He doesn't like visitors. Well, he's very conscientious, our king. Counts his gold with the diligence of a child building castles in the sand. For just like the tides will sweep away their sand battlements, so the king is bound to lose count. And just like the child will build a new castle the next day, so the king is certain to start counting anew. Interrupt him, though, and like a child, you'll throw a tantrum. But like a child, you'll drag your innards from your belly besides. Remember, if the king or any of his guards so much as see you, they'll take you for a thieving gremlin. Just ask Maradino. So much. He wanna marry it?
What's that gleam? 